Hello, in this video I'm going to solve the following problem for you. Evaluate the following integral. Integral of 1 plus x to the power of 1 over 2 all over 1 plus x to the power of 1 third times dx. That would be a good idea if you pause the video at this point and try to solve the problem yourself first. If you do your calculations correctly, one possible answer that you might get is as follows. The answer is very lengthy, so I hesitate to read it for you, but you can see it on the display now. Uh, okay, so now let us do the problem. The first thing that I will do here is to get rid of these fraction exponents, which is not very comfortable to work with by introducing a new variable t, that I introduce it in this way, t, I will call it x to the power of 1 over 6. Okay, if I do that, then x to the power of 1 half, I can find it by raising both sides to power 3, so this means that t to the third, t cubed, is x to the power of 1 half, and I raise it to power 2, so this means that t squared is x to the power of 1 third. So I do not have problems with these two, but I also need to get rid of dx because I have to write everything in terms of my new variable. So to do that, I raise both sides to power 6, so this becomes x, this becomes t to the power of 6, then I need dx, so dx becomes simply 6t to the power of 5 dt. Then of course I write my integral in this form, so integral i is equal to the integral instead of 1 plus x to the power of 1 half, I write 1 plus t cubed and instead of 1 plus x to the power of 1 third, I can write 1 plus t squared. And instead of dx, I can write 6t to the power of 5 dt. If I simplify this a little bit, I can pull this 6 out, and then I multiply t5 here, so it becomes t to the 8 plus t to the power of 5, and then I divide it by t squared plus 1 dt. Okay, so now if you look at the integrand, the integrand is a rational expression, and you know that if you want to solve an integral involving a rational expression as an integrand, you have to use the method of partial fractions, but you have to be careful that the degree of the numerator should be smaller than the degree of the denominator so that you can start uh, the method of partial fractions, which is, not in the, in this case, which is not the case in our problem. So, for example, you can use the... If the problem is simple, you can factorize it, play around a little bit, uh, of course, you can do it. it. Might be sometimes it is easier, but if it doesn't, if it doesn't come to your mind immediately, the last resort, at least, is to use the method of long division and divide this by that. Okay. So I will do it here. So let us use the method of uh, long division. I write t to the eight, t to the power of five, and then I divide this by t to the power of two plus one. The method that we want to use here you know, hopefully, that you take the first uh, term in the first polynomial, and then you divide it by the first term of the second polynomial, and you write the answer here. So if I divide t to the 8 by t to the 2, it becomes t to the power of 6. And then I multiply them, and I would write them here, but the point is I want to subtract these two polynomials, so for not getting confused, I usually, when I multiply, change the signs immediately here. So when I multiply t6 by t2, it becomes t8. I immediately change the sign. I multiply this, it becomes positive t to the 6. I change the sign. And then I start now adding them. Okay? In principle, I'm subtracting, but it means that I now add. So these two are gone. And then these two, this has the more, this has the highest, uh, higher power, so I have to bring that one first. I have to respect the order. Uh, every time I have to write them in descending order of the exponents of t. Uh, oh, sorry. This one is positive. This one is negative. This one is positive. And I repeat the process. I mean, take the first one, multiply it by the first one. It becomes minus t to the power of 4. Multiply minus t to the 4 here. This, the first one becomes minus t to the 6. I change it and write it positive. The next one also becomes negative t to the power of 4. I write it as positive t to the power of 4. And then what I do, I add them. They are gone. I bring them in order. t5 first, t4 second. Repeat the process again. 
I have to continue this process until either the remainder becomes zero or the degree of the remainder is less than the degree of the divisor. Okay, so I have to continue. So I divide this by that, it becomes t cubed, yes, multiplied here, so minus t to the power of 5 minus t cubed. These are gone, this comes first, this comes second, do it once more. So I divide, it becomes t squared, multiply that, minus t to the power of 4. This becomes t squared, so minus t squared. These are gone, minus t cubed, minus t squared once more, so it becomes minus t here, so it becomes t cubed, and then I have plus t minus t squared plus t once more. Minus t squared by t squared is just simply minus 1. I multiply it there here, it becomes t squared. It becomes minus 1. I change the sign, it becomes plus 1. And if I add them, this is gone, and it becomes t plus 1. Then I don't, I'm not able to continue the division because the remainder has degree 1, the divisor has degree 2. So I have to do it in that way. Uh, okay, so what does it mean? This means that this expression, t to the power of 8 plus t to the power of 5, which is the numerator of my rational expression, is the divisor multiplied by the quotient plus the remainder. Yes, so this means that I can write it as t squared plus 1 multiplied by t6 minus t4 plus t cubed plus t squared minus t minus 1 plus the remainder t plus 1. Okay, so that is what I got from this long division. Then I put this back into this equation. So what I get, I get 6 integral instead of this expression. I put that expression in here. Okay, so this, let me write it down. So it becomes t squared plus 1. Then I have t to the power of 6 minus t to the power of 4 plus t to the power of 3. And then I have plus t to the power of 2 minus t minus 1. And then I have t plus 1. Let me put this in a pair of brackets. And then I divide this by t squared plus 1. And then I have dt here. I also have 6 here. So let me double check that I am not missing something. Uh, plus plus. Yes, it seems to be right. Okay, now what I do, I take this one and then divide it by that, plus this one divided by that. When I do this one divided by that, these two terms are cancelled, so let me write it down here. So this becomes 6 integral, this expression, yes, plus uh, this expression divided by that. And the whole thing, dt. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So I have 7 integrals to calculate. But of course, all these integrals are more or less trivial. So if you don't mind, let me just do it in one go. So this becomes integral. 6 times of this one is t to the power of 7 divided by 7. So it's 1 over 7 t to the 7th. The next one is minus a fifth t to the power of 5. The next one is a one fourth t to the power of 4. The next one is one third t to the power of 3. And the next one is minus a half t squared. And the next one is minus 1, which becomes minus t. And then this one, if you don't mind, let me write it. The integral of this expression dt are called a j. Okay, so if I ask you what j is, so I, in order to calculate my integral, in principle, I just need to calculate j. Okay, so what is j? j is this integral. Integral, uh, no, 6 I already took care here, so I only write t plus 1 divided by t plus 1 and then dt. Okay, that's also a standard one. Now, uh, you don't even need the method of partial fractions here because that's a very standard integral. So the only thing that you have to do, because you have a first degree polynomial left here and a second degree polynomial left here, so what you need to do is to uh, see what the derivative of this is. So the derivative of this is actually 2t. So you can split this integral into two parts. So you can say that this integral of t over t squared plus 1 plus 1 over this one, because both of them 
are extremely simple to calculate. These are actually standard integrals, yes? So if I divide it into two parts, it becomes integral. Instead of this one, I can write 2t over t squared plus 1, but I have to multiply by 1 over 2 to compensate for this multiplication by 2. And the next one is integral dt over t squared plus 1. Okay? So this function, its derivative is here, so this is just simply the ln of this function. And this is the arctangent function, simple as that. So it becomes 1 over 2 ln of absolute value of t squared plus 1, but I don't need the absolute value sign because t squared plus 1 is positive. So I just write 1 plus t squared. And then this one is arctangent, so this tangent inverse of t. And of course, I don't put c's. I want to put an overall constant c at the very end. Okay? So this is my j. The only thing that I have to do is to switch back to the original in, uh, variable because I have written down everything in terms of t. Okay, so remember, this I have to put here, multiply by 6, replace t with what you see on the board. Yes? So for example, t squared is x to the power of third, and I don't know, t cubed, for example, is that one. So might be the starting point is to write from t. So I will write it in one go. So if I want to calculate my integral i, I have to multiply 6 here. So this becomes seven over 6 over 7, t to the power of 7. But what is t? t is this one. So if I want to know t to the power of 7, I raise this one to power 7, so it becomes 7 over 6, as simple as that. So what I could write, I will write 6 over 7, then I would write t, sorry, x to the power of uh, 6 over 7 over 6, sorry, and then 6 times 6 over 5, x to the t to the power of 5, which becomes x to the power of 5 over 6. The next one is 6 times 1 over 4, which is 3 over 2. And then I have x to the power of uh, 4 over 6, which is 2 thirds, yes? And the next one, I multiply 6 here, so this becomes 2. And then I have t cubed, but t cubed is x to the power of 1 half. And then I have 6 times that one is minus 3. t squared, but t squared is x to the power of 1 third. And then I have uh, minus 6t, but t is x to the power of 1 over 6, so it becomes minus 6x to the power of 1 over 6. Okay, so I multiplied 6, 8 up to here. I replaced t uh, for some expression in terms of x. Then I have to multiply 6 by my j, but this is my j. So I multiply this one by 6. So this becomes 3 ln of 1 plus t squared. Instead of t squared, I put x to the power of 1 third. And then I also multiply 6 here, so it becomes 6 tangent inverse of t, but t is x to the power of 1 over 6. And then I, it's a good point to introduce the overall constant of integration c. And this is what you get uh, for the answer to this integral. Uh, okay, so I hope that this video was useful for you. Until the next video, be safe and goodbye. Thank you.